All right, I'm going to give you a couple of example or an example of a problem that uses a displacement vector to move an object. All right, so we're going to learn how to calculate resultant forces. And the big hint to calculate resultant forces is adding vectors. It's really, it's really all it is. So the diagram shows two forces, not toe, but two, pulling on an object at the origin each of 12 Newton magnitude. So that means that the magnitude of this guy is 12 and the magnitude of this guy is 12. I'm going to call this vector B and this vector A because I want to. The angle here is 12 degrees. The angle here is 40 degrees. And I want to know, okay, if I have a force that's tugging this object this direction at that amount of force, Newtons, and if I'm pulling it in this direction with that amount of Newtons, that I want to know where that object is going to go, what direction, how far. Now the key here is to understand that what you're actually doing is adding these two forces. So I'm going to take this force and add it to that force. So that means I'm going to move this vector. Remember, you can move a vector anywhere you want. It still remains to be the same vector. So I'll pull out my ruler again. So if I have this lined up here, I just want to move it over here. Make sure that we're parallel and about the same length. All right. And so that's vector B that I've moved over there. Now, if I add the two vectors, what I get right in the middle is what we call the resultant vector. It's the geometric version of where and how far that object is going to move from its original position, how it's going to be displaced, what direction it will be displaced, and how far it will be displaced. That's the red, resultant vector. And I, yes, I noticed that B is missing. All right, so now the question says, what is the direction and magnitude of the resultant force? So now I have a reasonable facsimile of what the resultant force looks like. So now I want to talk about its direction. So its direction has two components to it. The direction is going to be the angle. Let's see, let's put this over here. Angle with horizontal or vertical, pick one. I'm going to do horizontal and uh, like north, south, east, west directions, north, south, east, west. So if I take a look at this resultant, if I say I want to find this angle right in there as my angle with the horizontal, this is the one I'm going to call it uh, alpha. That's the angle I'm looking for. And what is this north, south, east, west? Well, if I consider this middle line directly going east, then my resultant is just a little south of east. So then my actual direction would be alpha degrees just south of east. Okay, think about a, a map. That would be the, the most helpful way to, to think about that. All right, so we're trying to find all that information, find out its magnitude and all that kind of stuff in order to come up with a direction which is that angle alpha, as well as the length of it, which is the magnitude. All right, so in order for me to do that, I actually need to find the components of uh, the resultant vector. So that means I have to find the components of A and add that to the components of B. Since we only have lengths and um, angles, I'm going to use the trigonometric way. So if I start with vector A. All right, this vector is in quadrant one. So if I think about north and south here and west comes out this way, that's quadrant one. And uh, vector B is in quadrant four, so we have to think about things a little bit differently. So if I think back, my I component will be R cosine theta plus R sine theta, where R is 12. I can actually write 12 on there. And that's the I component and the J component. B in quadrant four. 
So x is positive in that quadrant, but y is negative. Now remember, both vectors are the same length, so every, all these should be 12, but it just so happens that that angle is 12. So there's lots of 12s in here, but that's an angle and that's the length. They're all the same length. So if I call the resultant vector r, then if I want to find the components of r, I just have to add the components of a and b. So the i component of r is 12 cosine 12 degrees plus 12 cosine 40 degrees i plus 12 sine 12 degrees minus 12 sine 40 degrees, 4j. So I add the i's. Now this is not magnitude. This is not a unit vector. These are all, or, or you know, using the rectangular version of components. So I'm just adding these two sets of components together. I add the x's, I add the y's, and because that's what the resultant vector is. So I'm going to write down components of r to four decimal place accuracy. So I'll get my trusty calculator here. Let's see, is there enough room so you could look at everything? Probably not. All right, so let's see. 12 cosine 12. Now you either put your calculator on degrees or you make sure you use the degree symbol. Um, for most students, putting the calculator on degrees is easier but I forget to take it off when I need radians. So to get the degree, I do second angle, which is the apps key. And you can see number one is the degree symbol. That's what I'm using. So if I go back, 12 cosine 12 degrees plus 12 sine, oh no, 12 cosine 12, 12 cosine 40. Cosine 40 degrees. So 20.9303. Now that's a length. It's not degrees, it's not radians, it's not anything weird. It's just a length. It's uh, this length right here. Okay. And then I need to do 12 sine 12 degrees minus 12 sine 40 degrees. Mm -hmm. And I get 5.2185, negative, 5.2185. Okay, and that makes sense because I'm just going down a little ways here compared to 12 or 20, down a little ways. So that those numbers make complete sense. So that is my components of R. Now, once I have the components of R, I can find the magnitude really easily and the direction. So if I find the magnitude, let's do that one first because that's the easier one. So the magnitude of R is the square root of this guy squared plus this guy squared. And it's not going to be pretty, but that's okay. So square root of 20 point, I need another parenthesis in there, 20.9303 squared plus negative, point, uh, negative 5.2185. Twenty one point five seven one one. Now that's the length of the red vector right here. And being a little bit slightly bigger than twenty, that makes sense because again it's just such a small rotation down. All right, twenty one point five seven one one. Now I'm gonna kind of um redraw something here so that when we find the, the vector or the angle 
alpha, this makes a little bit more sense. All right. So I'm going to come over here and kind of do a little bit of rendering here. So I have the two axes and then I have my resultant vector that comes down here. Now I know this length is minus 5.2185. Am I going off the screen here? No. And I know this length here is 20.9303. Okay, that's a situation that I have here. Now I want that angle here. So if you think about trigonometry, you can use SOHCAHTOA to come up with that angle. Um, and I know I have these two values and I'm going to use tangent because I don't, need, I don't need to spend the time finding another side if I don't need to. So I know that according to SOHCAHTOA, the tangent of alpha is going to equal opposite over hypotenuse. I'm sorry, over adjacent, over adjacent. So alpha then will be arctan of that number, 5.2185 divided by 20.9303. Now, I just want that acute angle. Uh, if I put this into the calculator, it's going to give me a negative angle, but we don't need a negative angle here. We just want a acute one. So let me put that number into my trusty calculator and I'm going to come to the mode and make sure it is on degree mode. If I start in degrees, I want to have my answer in degrees. So in this case, it's just easier to put in degree mode. So tangent inverse of minus 5.2185 divided by 20.9303. And I get negative 13.999. Nine, seven. And yeah, that's pretty close to 14, but just leave it nine, 13. Um, negative angle, but I just want the acute angle. So I'm going to say alpha is equal to 13.99997. So in answer to the question, the direction says I want magnitude and direction. So I would say magnitude always conclude of resultant force is 21.5711. And what unit of measure should I put on that? Well, if that length is 12 and it's in Newtons, then that length will be also in Newtons. So it's 21.5711 Newtons. And in the direction of 13.99997 degrees, what did we say? south of east. So there's, again, very many different ways that you can describe the direction as long as you start with the same resultant. So you can say if you find the angle that's down here between the red and the vertical down here, that would be the angle east of south. Okay. So it doesn't matter really. You just make sure that it's all oriented correctly. But nevertheless, there's that. Now, part B says, what is the direction and the magnitude of the force that will keep the object in its original position? So in other words, you want a third force out here somewhere that when all three pull, that guy doesn't move. That's what you're looking for. What is the direction and magnitude of the force that will keep the object in its original position? Now, in order to keep something in its original position in vectors, you have to know that vector A, which we were given, and vector B added together, plus the third vector that we're trying to find has to not move the box anywhere. So in other words, it has to be the zero vector, which has no length, no direction. It just, there's just no movement. So this is the force that we want. Well, we already have a lot of this information done. Um, technically, C is going to equal minus A minus B. Or you can say minus A plus B. Well, we have A plus B. So technically, isn't that minus the re negative of the resultant force from part A? Kind of use your previous work to help you with future work. The key to this problem, I mean, if you don't have any of this work done, uh, like there wasn't a part A, you would still have to do all of it. 
and come up with the resultant force and then turn it around. But if you have it all done, just use it. So that means that um, the magnitude of C will be the negative of R. So that's going to be the negative. Uh, uh, well, it's not negative. Actually, it's just the same length, 21.5711. And now let's see, if I think about where I'm at, my original resultant was here. So it means my negative resultant is going to be here. So that angle will be the same. So it will be, let's see, this is west, this is north. So I'm going to be slightly north of west. So I'll be 13.9997 degrees north of west. There you go. That was kind of fun.